I made an NPC generator that's a browser extension, so it's always at your fingertips, and it's completely customizable so you can make it generate exactly what you're looking for. Oh, and it's completely free. Making this generator also led me down a rabbit hole of research about how our brains remember details, which has completely changed the way that I describe NPCs, and I'm excited to share that with you as well. And I'm also excited to share some ways that you can use the sponsor of this video, Describe, along with the NPC generator to really make your characters and game come alive. Welcome to the table. I'm Kelly, and we're gonna make a person in under a second. Did you know that on average, people can retain three to five things in their working memory? What does that have to do with making NPCs in a TTRPG? Male, half-elf, already forgotten the name. <laughs> Middle age something. We'll get to that. But first, I wanna show you the free NPC generator that I made and show you how to use it, including a secret feature that I haven't seen in any other NPC generator. The generator is available as a browser extension for either Chrome or Firefox. Whenever I run games, either in person or online, I always have a browser window open, but it's been really nice to have it right there at my fingertips, no matter what tab I'm in, no having to click around to find it. Let's start with the headlining feature, the customizability. This is the whole reason I started making the extension in the first place. My current home game is in a world that has a couple of custom races, but NPCs who are this race are not very prominent in the world because I use a standard NPC generator and I keep forgetting to sub out the race of the generated NPCs. In this generator, you can add in your own stuff. So if you go into the options page by right clicking on the icon and hitting options, you get a whole bunch of things you can play with. By checking or unchecking each box, you can choose what the generator generates. If you enable a section, you're presented with a text box where you can enter your own information. Let's say you really like the name Todd and Elizabeth, and you want to make sure there are characters in your world with those names. Just enter anything in a comma separated list and it'll be mixed in with the default data or you can check the box to only use custom data, and now all of your NPCs are either named Todd or Elizabeth. When you enable the description section, you can see that each part of the description can be enabled or disabled, and you can add your own data for each individual piece. Now, before we look at the research that led me to change how I give character description, and a feature I implemented in the extension because of it, let's look at the secret feature I've been so excited about. It's such a simple one, but I found it makes the experience a lot better. To generate an NPC, just click the big generate NPC button. But let's say you like the description, but you don't like the name, no problem. Just click on the name and it generates a new one. This applies to any section, just click it and it'll regenerate that specific part. In an upcoming version, I'd like to extend this functionality so that if you don't like an individual part of the description or the voice or the name, you can click it and it'll regenerate just that specific part. But for now, clicking each section regenerates the whole section. Speaking of upcoming versions, I'll be doing some feature request polls in my Patreon, so head to the link in the description to get your chance to vote. The other main button on the extension window is the copy to clipboard button, which is pretty self-explanatory. Once you land on something you like, just click the copy button and then paste it into your notes. The copy button also respects any settings you've chosen. So if you don't want the extension to generate a voice for you and you have that disabled, when you hit copy and then paste it into your notes, it only pastes the sections that you have enabled. Before I talk about how the names are generated and that there are a staggering 5 million possible name combinations, I wanna quickly go over the voice section. This is also something I haven't seen before, but I've really enjoyed using it as voice inspiration. I based this off of the voice categories I talked about in one of the very first videos I did on this channel, which was about how to do character voices without doing an accent. I like to break a voice down into pitch, speed, forcefulness, and some extras that go along with it. I also do have an accents text box on the settings page if you like to do accents. You can just fill in the accents you wanna do, and it'll generate them alongside the rest of the voice note. If the voices section is enabled, I found it pretty easy to recall voices from my notes using these categories. Before Loren and I quiz each other on how many details we can remember about an NPC, and before we look at the two different methods I used for name generation, I want to show you how you can use the generator in combination with the sponsor of today's video, Describe, to really make your characters come to life. For the spur of the moment improvised characters, a generator or role table can be great. For NPCs that are going to be more important in the story, I like to prepare those ahead of time. Describe has over 1700 rich character descriptions for all sorts of characters. It's an awesome resource to browse through and read for inspiration. Combining the generator with pre-written character descriptions can also be a really powerful tool for inspiration. For example, if I'm trying to come up with a villain lieutenant, I might randomly generate a character and paste it into my notes page. Then take a look through Describe's characters and pick out a couple of my favorite, pasting them into my notes as well. Then I'll go through and pick out my favorite details from each item to truly make a detailed fleshed out character description that feels rich and alive. I 
can then feed each of these details to my players in bite-sized chunks because of how we retain information, which I'll talk about more in a minute. The last thing I'll do is figure out where this interaction will take place and look up some cool location inspiration from the location descriptions, similarly combining elements from a couple of different ones. And there you have it, a rich encounter that took less than 60 seconds to put together. Describe also has a music and sound effects tool called Opus, which I use in my weekly game. The music is awesome, and the ambiences really add to the experience. I usually use KenkuBot and stream the audio into our Discord call, but you can also invite your players and stream the sound directly to them on the site. Go check out the link in the description to check it out, and use the code POWERWORDSPILL at checkout to get an extended 30-day free trial. Before I quiz Loren on her NPC detail retention, I want to show you the two ways that the extension can generate names, and how they can be combined to generate over 5 million different first and last name combinations. The first method I used was to scour government websites from around the world and take data from their top baby names and surname lists. It turns out that lots of governments have their census data publicly available. I then grouped the countries into continents and randomly combined the lists. I know that names and languages differ dramatically within continents, so the default data is a random collection of names from around the world. There are also only names that use the Latin script in the default data. But if you want a different list of names, you can just paste in a comma-separated list into the extension and it'll pull from those. You can enable or disable each continent's data within the default data, and you can also enable or disable prefix and suffix generation. What the heck is prefix and suffix generation? I've looked at a bunch of real-world names and family fantasy names and pulled them apart. This method takes these parts and randomly mashes them back together, checking for awkward consonant combinations, and then spits out an original name. Or an existing name, like Arwen, which does come up randomly sometimes. And because I'm a child, I did use the prefix P-E-N and the suffix I-S, so there's a very small chance that you know. The upside of using this generation method is that you get some cool sounding, semi-original fantasy names. The downside is that you end up with mostly two-syllable names and they can sometimes sound like gibberish and be hard for your players to remember. But the option is there and you can play around with the settings that you like. Speaking of your players remembering things, you're probably wasting your time by giving too many details about NPCs that your players won't actually remember. A paper written by Nelson Cowan in 2001 looked at several studies on short-term memory capacity and concluded that most young adults have a working memory capacity of three to five chunks. For the purpose of what we're talking about, a chunk is a detail, like brown hair for example. This means that on average, for information that is delivered through one sensory channel, like me telling you something, without repetition, a person can absorb three to five details if they're given in rapid succession without repetition. What this potentially means in the context of TTRPGs is that you might be wasting your time and breath giving an extremely detailed picture of every NPC only to have your players forget their first name 30 seconds later. Who? To test this out, I gave Loren a long NPC character description and then asked her to repeat it back to me. You can play along too to see how many details you can remember. Okay, their name is Harwin Mantrelli. They're a male half-elf with blue eyes, long brown hair, they have a thin build, average height, they have an earring, and they look around suspiciously. I've already forgotten the name. Just as many as you can. It sounds like Harwin something. Yeah. Male. Yeah. Half-elf. Yeah. Blue eyes. Yeah. Earring. Yeah. And there was something else, but now I forgot. Fidgets. <laughs> Close, but not quite. Okay, that was pretty good. Griffin Bennett, a young, non-binary tabaxi with a face tattoo and a top knot, has a tall, heavy build and is always twirling a coin. Griffin Bennett, a non-binary tabaxi, has a top knot and is always twirling a coin. Yeah. And I can't remember the rest. <laughs> hey, that was six out of ten. <laughs> okay. That description had ten items. Now let's try a description with five items. Tamarin, they're a female dwarf with a long braid and freckles. Tamarind female dwarf, brown hair, <laughs> and a braid. Yep, braid. Wait, Tamarind, dwarf, woman, something about their hair, long hair, and a braid. Braid and freckles. But oh, still. freckles. Okay, well, I mean, four out of five. Sounds better. Yeah. Herrick, a middle-aged Goliath with a bowl cut, a stocky build, and a scar. Herrick, a um, middle-aged Goliath with a bowl cut, and a stocky build. No, stocky something. Yeah, stocky build. Oh. Four out of five. Okay. Yeah. That was much easier. Whoop-de-doo. 
What does it all mean, Basil? So how am I gonna use this information to give more memorable NPC descriptions? If I'm just describing passing or unnamed NPCs, I'll just describe four characteristics, which is where this setting comes in. If you want to limit the number of description items that the extension generates, you can do that here. It'll take all of the enabled description items, randomly select a number of description items equal to the number you set here, and then output those description items. For example, if I choose two, it'll output hairstyle and build on this one, but race and an extra feature on this one. You can also just generate the full description and randomly pick a few, but I figured I'd give you the option to limit them if you wanted to randomize which details are given. For a named NPC, I'll be introducing their first name, their race, and then two other details. I think this will make the world still feel alive, but I won't be wasting my time generating and recording a bunch of details my players won't remember. For NPCs that become more important to the story, I'll generate the full list and I'll just pick a couple of different attributes to describe each time they meet the character. Repetition is one of the easiest methods we as game masters can use to reinforce details for our players. This is Kind of a separate topic, but just as a tip, if there's anything really important that I'm trying to get across to my players, I try to repeat it at least three times from different sources across multiple sessions, including using it in the recap so it's really hammered home. The last little section in the generator is a section where I can tell you about my latest projects or things I'm releasing. Normally these generators exist on websites where ads are used to help pay for the server costs and to help fund development. In a browser extension, there aren't any server costs and there also aren't any ads, but hopefully you feel that an unobtrusive link in the bottom is a fair exchange for a free tool. And a big thank you to my patrons. You're part of the reason I'm able to spend more time on the channel and make cool stuff like this. I really appreciate you. If you liked the video and you think you'll use the extension, let me know by hitting the subscribe button. Do you want to learn about some more free tools for running TTRPGs? You can check out this video here for five free tools that I use in almost every session. I appreciate you.